This is a painting that I'm working on. It is an oil painting. It is 17 by 30. It's on panel and it's almost finished, but I'd like it to have a stronger light source. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a shadow here and I'm going to darken the shadows on the spider. By darkening the shadows, it will make the light source appear even stronger. So I'm going to glaze first some more deep shadows on the spider here. And this video is going to show my process for that glazing. So let's get started. My painting palette is a large sheet of glass that sits on top of my painting table. And I've already pulled this stuff that I'm going to be using for the glazing. Glazing is using transparent colors over dried areas of the painting. Scumbling is when you're using light opaque colors over areas of the painting. We're going to be glazing, so we're going to be using a transparent color. So I've already got a phthalo green, which is a nice blue, cool, transparent green. I've got a palette knife and a razor. The palette knife is for mixing the paint. The razor is for cleaning the palette. And I've got a three-part medium that I make myself for mixing with the paint to make it even more fluid and more transparent, or sometimes I just use plain linseed oil. And then, of course, coffee. Very essential. So that's what we're going to be using to do the glazing, which we're going to start momentarily. So here we go. I'm going to squeeze out a little bit of the phthalo green. I'm using green because it's a complement of the red of the spider, which has been mostly painted in shades of red so far. Being the complement of red, the green should create a nice deep gray, and it's more interesting than a gray or a black. Black tends to look very flat and kind of kill color, whereas I think the green will look a little more lively and create a nice contrast with the red without killing it. So I put a little bit of my three-part medium on the palette knife and I'm just going to mix this up. I may have put a little bit more of the green on the palette than I really need for this, but I wanted you to be able to see it. And I've got plenty, so it's all right. And this will stay dry for a day or two, so if I need to go back in and do some more work after the initial phase, I'll have plenty of paint to work with. So that's not a bad thing. So I'm just mixing up the medium into the paint with the palette knife. Don't use your brushes for this. It tends to ruin your brushes when you do this kind of mixing with a brush. Save your brushes for painting. Use palette knives for mixing color. And you can see the mass tone and the actual color of this. The mass tone is where it's really, really thick and light isn't going into it and coming back out. It's just, and it looks almost black. And the real color is where you see the edges of it, where it gets thin. Light is actually passing through that and creating this gorgeous color, which we're going to play with when we do the glazing next. All right, let's talk a little bit about brushes. I've pulled four brushes from my collection and they're all a little bit different. I've got two genuine sable brushes. I've got one that is a blend of sable and synthetic bristles, and I've got one that's all synthetic. I bought a lot of sable brushes when I first started oil painting because I had heard that they were excellent, and they are. The problem with genuine sable, though, is that it tends to wear out very quickly. And so lately I've been buying more of the synthetic bristles just because they tend to wear better. They don't start off as nice as the sable, but very quickly sables over use will not be as nice as a gently broken in synthetic. And after several years, the 
synthetic bristle brushes will be much better than the sables. So they're all soft bristles. They're all going to apply the paint the same way. And for glazing, we want the paint to be, you know, pretty smooth, fairly fluid, almost runny. And we're going to be applying thin layers of paint, hence the need for soft bristle brushes. And we're going to be applying the paint very smoothly with almost no brush strokes or hopefully no brush strokes at all showing. So I've got a little bit of paint on the brush. This is the Thalo Green with a little medium added. And I'm just going to start kind of sketching in this deep shadow here. We can remove any paint that might be applied too thickly with like a Q-tip or a paper towel or even my finger. We can also take some of the medium and go right into this to make it a little bit thinner if we want. But just kind of sketch where that shadow is going to be. And then see if we like it. And we can always make changes. The painting, the paint rather, on this painting is completely dry. So we can remove paint, this new paint, we can completely remove it without disturbing any of the layers underneath, which is one of the advantages of glazing over a completely dry painting is because we will not be blending the newly applied paint with anything that's already there. We'll just simply be applying a fresh layer, which we can completely remove or change or thin or make thicker. We can do anything to it that we want to do. There's not, and we're not doing anything that will permanently affect the painting unless we want it to. So we're completely free to play and test and experiment any way we like. And that's definitely the effect that I'm kind of going for. So I'm going to take a little bit of medium. And thin this out and blend it in and smooth this edge so there's more of a transition. And then we may take a Q-tip and kind of thin it out even further. Q-tips are some of the best brushes available. So I've got a fresh Q-tip and what I'm doing is just gently removing some of the darker areas so that they'll blend in more a little bit earlier in the transition here between the areas that I've glazed and the areas that I want to leave the way they were originally painted. You can go through a lot of Q-tips this way, but that's all right. They're not terribly expensive, not like regular brushes. So essentially in the areas that I'm going over with the Q-tip, I'm staining the piece with the phthalo green. And so it's extremely thin and just barely there, like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing to the legs, because all of these legs are going to have to be slightly adjusted to account for this darker shadow. And then we'll put the shadow in here, and I may paint a suggestion of a web, and then this piece will be done. So the last step is just cleaning the brushes out. And I usually set a paper towel on top of the palette 
I have this airtight container that is full of Gamsol, which is an odorless mineral spirit for cleaning and thinning oil paints. It has a screen about halfway down that you scrape the, gently scrape the brushes against, and then it removes the paint, and you can wipe them off until you see no paint coming off on the paper towel, and then you know your brushes are clean. The Gamsol is less quick to evaporate than more traditional solvents like turpentine, so it's supposedly healthier to breathe over time. You would breathe more turpentine in the same amount of time because it evaporates much quicker. Gamsol supposedly has a lower or a higher flash point rather, so it's less flammable than turpentine. It's not as strong of a solvent as turpentine, so I do occasionally clean my brushes out with actual turpentine because it tends to get more of the paint out of the brushes. But for everyday, day-to-day -day cleaning, especially if I haven't been using a lot of paint, this works just fine. And then I just set the brushes down to dry, like so. And then once they're dry, I can put them back in their containers and they're ready to go next time. Then I just close this up and it's nice and airtight for the next time. Paper towel can just be thrown out. Once the paint, when you scrape the paint off inside against the screen that's inside this, the paint will fall to the bottom. And eventually over time, if you paint enough, this will fill up to the point where the screen is sitting right up against this half full container of old paint. And so what I will do is I'll pour a little of the Gamsol off, there won't be much there, into like a clean jar. I'll take a plastic spoon and scoop the paint out and throw it away, wipe the inside of this out, fill it back up full with Gamsol, close it, and put the screen back in, close it up and it's ready to go next time. So that's how that works. But we're not there yet. I may demonstrate that at some other time. But that concludes the glazing exercise. I hope you enjoyed it. This is my first video. I know there were some problems, but we'll solve them in future videos and just try to get better every time I do one. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you again soon.